Right, so we have hit uh, 6% and we're up the Bombays. We've been given getting limited engine power. We're down to having 35 kilowatts available, which is kind of just allowing us to get the hill. That's interesting that it restricts that much. Hi, I'm Richard from EVs and Beyond, and today we are out checking out the BYD Dolphin. But this time it's the extended range. Now, this video is not going to be a detailed walkthrough. If you want that, there's a link up in the top corner to our really close look through the standard range. Pretty much the same, except for a couple of little details that we'll discuss during the trip. But what you're getting here is some really nice little features in regards to how the car drives, things like new multi-link suspension, uh, but most importantly, a 60 kilowatt hour battery that's 60 kilowatt usable, and a 427 kilometer at WLTP range. Now we've been on the road for a few days now in the car and the weather has been appalling, but uh, we've set a bit of a challenge today to do what I would call a bit of an extreme range test. We've taken this dolphin a long way from the sea. We've run it up here to Ruapehu, up the mountain, and we're gonna drive all the way from here back to our base in Auckland. So it's not the usual city environment you'd expect to see this car in. It's a, I guess it's a little bit of a case of a uh, fish out of water. Memo. Yeah, I know, but it works for this situation. Anyway, let's go. Now, we're already about 10% down to the battery just from climbing up here up the mountain, but I think we'll get quite a lot on the way back down, and we'll stop a couple of times on the trip just to talk about some of the features that we've found now that we're out in the real world we like or don't necessarily like about the BYD Dolphin. Right, so we have made it to Tikwita. We've stopped at the Bosco Cafe on the outside of town for a little bit of lunch. And uh, we're gonna just run through a couple of numbers first. So we're 180 kilometers into the trip. Uh, that includes coming down the mountain and all that and going up the mountain to get down the mountain, if that makes sense. Uh, and we are averaging about 17 and a half kilowatt hours per 100K which is somewhat argue a little bit higher for a small car, but this car is loaded. And that's gonna to go to my next point, the boot. On our original review of the standard range, I was a little bit perhaps harsh on the size of the boot, and since you couldn't get much in, but if I pop this now while a truck runs past, as you can see, that boat is more than capable. There is a very overstuffed large suitcase. There is a small suitcase, there's bags of junk, jackets, the lot, uh, enough for, well there's three of us that have been away for a number of days now. So that is going along well. Now, what do you think of the color? Personally, I really like the pink one. I don't know why. I like the uh, pink touches on the wheels. I actually really like the lights along the back and the build your dreams. Again, you're not taking out of there. So, yeah, that part of it, yeah, so that part of it is uh, quite impressive. That boot, it's doing well. With 150 kilowatts of power and 310 meters of torque, the extended range Dolphin offers surprising performance and even fully loaded, it felt capable of overtaking. The suspension of this model is soft and comfort orientated, which we really enjoyed for this trip. Even loaded, it felt nice and stable. The Ling Long tires were fine for dry weather performance, but I really need to acknowledge how good they were in the torrential rain we experienced on the road.
The driver assistance systems, lane keep, adaptive cruise and so forth, had not yet been calibrated for New Zealand conditions on the Dolphin. They were fine, not great, but not annoying like some other Chinese vehicles have been in the past. Uh, time to have a bit of a chat about the numbers. Um, now they're going to be high because, well I thought they are going to be high because we went through, if you're watching the time lapse there, just some horrendous weather. But they're actually not too bad. Now we're a little bit on the Waikato Expressway now, but just before we got on I uh, quickly ran some numbers and we're still averaging just over 16 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometres. Uh, again, not necessarily small car numbers, but consider the load on board this vehicle would be a few hundred kilos and the terrible weather, it's pretty good. That's putting range at just over 370 kilometers. So still well short of WLTP, which is 427. But again, we're in really interesting conditions. This, as we said at the start, is an extreme range test. Now, let's talk a little bit about the car itself. And uh, my camera recommend can pan more around to the dashboard than having to focus on me. Um, the pink, I've really grown to like it. Uh, you do, of course, have uh, uh, different interior options but I'm loving the look of this car and it's not showing any marks or anything from our trip. Um, I would like a little more reach adjust on the steering wheel. I think the start button here is just a little bit out of the way and I actually find it a bit of a struggle to find and get to sometimes. Uh, similarly we've had a big water bottle here in the cup holder and that blocks a lot of these buttons over here for the air conditioning and so forth. I have however if you watch my review of the standard model where I complained a little about the transmission uh, location. I've gotten really used to that now, it doesn't bother me at all, so that is something that you do get used to. Lots of storage we found, I don't think we're ever going to use this giant big bin up on the dashboard, but it's there if you need it. Right, so the infotainment, it is very similar to what we have seen before in the Addo. A um, little bit of a different design, but nice responsive screen, you've got lots of options, you've got the uh, voice assistant, you've got navigation, Spotify, uh, all those kind of things. You've got the vehicle cameras outside, so you can see what's going on, which is fantastic. Though unfortunately we don't have a drive recorder in this car, which is a bit disappointing. I would love to see that uh, still appear in the uh, car, considering the cameras are there, it's just lacking the ability it seems to record it. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, you've actually got some more smart charging features that have turned up recently in the Addo. They are already in the Dolphin, which is fantastic, the ability to schedule your charging and so forth. And of course you've got wireless, Android Auto, Android Auto and USB CarPlay. Uh, and CarPlay works really well, again really responsive, uh, pretty happy with that. We've been using PlugShare to find some charging options for the rest of the trip. So yeah, that's uh, a little bit of an update on the thing. Now I think we're going to make it to Bombay uh, and uh, we'll see what our actual final mileage is. We will have to bail out at some point just so that we don't uh, run out in the middle of the road. But so far the Dolphin is doing really well. Right, so we have hit six uh, percent and we're up the Bombay's we've been given getting limited engine power we're down to having 35 kilowatts available which is kind of just allowing us to get the hill that's interesting that it restricts that much with that much battery left um, yeah so hopefully we'll make the charger At the top of the hill, full power was restored. This is not unusual for some models to reduce power as the battery gets low as a protection mechanism. But I wonder if this setup goes a little too far. Either way, we've let BYD know and they've passed on to their engineers to look at. Pretty much straight away, the Dolphin went to 87 kilowatts of charging speed, pretty much dead on to predicted rate. Right, back at our home base. So how did the Dolphin do? I just want to reiterate that this was no easy test. Adding to consumption was our heavy onboard load, the need to keep heating and air conditioning on, 110 km an hour Waikato motorways, and rain for most of the day, really heavy rain, and that does set power. The 352 km final tally gives an average consumption of 16.48 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and a potential range, should we have kept going, of 376 kilometers theoretically. That is very solid in its own right, but leads me to believe that with one person on board and better conditions, we could have smashed the WLTP and I could get closer to 500 kilometers. I think it really is possible in the extended range Dolphin. 
For all its bright colors and interesting looks, the Dolphin has really grown on me. It's a sophisticated, solid, and mature engineering effort from BYD. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget for more, like, subscribe, down the bottom of the page there, and also visit evsandbeyond.co.nz for more great EV content.